From Hidden Figures, History Writing by Margot Lee Shetterly The newspaper ad caught the attention of many women. It read, Reduce Your Household Duties. Women who are not afraid to roll up their sleeves and do jobs previously filled by men should call the Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory. A few years earlier, an ad like this would have been unthinkable. Most employers never would have considered a woman for a job that had always been performed by a man. But in the spring of 1943, with World War II in full swing and many men off serving in the military, the country needed all the help it could get. Employers were beginning to hire women to do jobs that had once belonged only to men. This particular ad was placed by the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA, a government agency dedicated to studying the science of flying. The NACA shared a campus with the U.S. Army Air Corps in Hampton, Virginia, a city in the southeastern part of the state next to the Chesapeake Bay. The NACA's mission was important and unique to help the United States develop the most powerful and efficient airplanes in the world. Airplanes moved military troops, tracked enemies, and launched bombs. World leaders felt that the country that ruled the skies would win the war. President Franklin D. Roosevelt believed in the importance of air power. So, two years earlier, in 1941, he had challenged the nation to increase its production of airplanes to 50,000 units a year. At that time, the industry had manufactured only 3,000 planes a year. The NACA and private industry were up for the challenge. By 1943, the American aircraft industry was the largest, most productive, and most sophisticated in the world, making three times more planes than the Germans, who were fighting on the other side of the war. Victory Through Air Power Before manufacturers built the airplanes, the designs were developed, tested, and refined at the Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory, which was where the NACA had first begun its operations in 1917. The engineers created wind tunnels to simulate or imitate different conditions a plane could encounter when flying. This helped the engineers to test airplane parts as well as whole aircraft, examining them for any problems, like air disturbance and uneven wing geometry. After that testing, pilots flew the planes, trying to assess how the machines handled in the air. Did the aircraft roll unexpectedly? Did it stall? Was it hard to guide or maneuver? Making small changes to the design added up to a difference in performance. Even tiny improvements in speed and efficiency multiplied over millions of pilot miles added to a difference that could tip the balance of the war. People working at Langley knew that they were doing their part to win the war. Victory through air power, said Henry Reed the engineer in charge of the Langley Laboratory, and the workers took their mission to heart. Wanted Female Mathematicians Each of the engineers at the Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory required the support of a number of other workers, craftsmen to build the airplane models, mechanics to maintain the test tunnels, and number crunchers to process the data that was collected during the tests. For the engineers, a plane was basically a complex physics experiment. Physics is the science of matter, energy, and motion. Physics meant math, and math meant mathematicians. At the Langley Laboratory, mathematicians meant women. Female mathematicians had been on the job at Langley since 1935, and it didn't take long for the women to show that they were just as good or even better at computing than many of the male engineers. But few of the women were granted the title mathematician, which would have put them on equal footing with some male employees. Instead, they were classified as sub-professionals, 
a title that meant they could be paid less. At Langley, the female mathematicians were called computers. They did the computations to turn the results of the raw data gathered by the engineers into a more useful form. Today, we think of computers as machines. But in the 1940s, a computer was just someone whose job it was to do computations, a flesh-and-blood woman who was very good with numbers. In 1943, it was difficult for the Langley Laboratory to find as many qualified women as they needed. A recruiter from the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics visited colleges in search of young women with analytical or mathematical skills. The Human Computers When the managers couldn't satisfy the demand with only white employees, the government decided to hire African Americans. A civil rights leader named A. Philip Randolph encouraged President Roosevelt to sign an executive order a law that ordered the desegregation of the federal government and defense industry and created the Fair Employment Practices Committee. This executive order opened up new and exciting opportunities for African Americans, allowing them to work side-by-side with white people during the war. The federal government also helped create special training classes at black colleges, where people could learn the skills they would need to be successful in the war jobs. Black newspapers, like the Norfolk Journal and Guide, published articles telling their readers to apply for these new job openings. And there were many applicants. The applications were not supposed to consider race. A recent law had done away with the requirement that the application must include a photo. But it wasn't hard for employers to figure out which job candidates were black. African Americans did not have access to white colleges and universities. So black applicants came from black colleges, such as West Virginia State University, Howard University, Hampton Institute, and Arkansas Agricultural, Mechanical, and Normal College. Many of the African-American candidates had years of teaching experience, as well as math and science degrees. Once hired, the black mathematicians were assigned to a separate workspace in the warehouse building on the west side of the Langley campus. The east area computers were all white. The west area computers were all black, except for the supervisor and her assistant, who were white women. There had always been African-American employees at Langley, but they had worked as janitors, cafeteria workers, mechanics assistants, and groundskeepers. Hiring black mathematicians, that was something new. For the most part, the engineers welcomed extra hands, even if those hands were black. The Langley Laboratory was operating around the clock to test airplanes to be flown by American soldiers in the war. Everyone had a job to do. Hampton, Virginia, where the Langley campus was located, was very much a southern town. State law and Virginia custom meant that African Americans did not ride the same buses or eat in the same cafeterias or use the same bathrooms as whites. The Langley staff had to prepare for the arrival of the African American mathematicians. One of the tasks, creating metal bathroom signs that read, Colored Girls. For the black women, the experience of working at a laboratory offered the chance to do interesting work that would help support the war effort. Walking into an unfamiliar environment wasn't easy for the women of the new West Area Computing Office, but each of them was eager for the opportunity to help their country and prove that they, too, could be excellent mathematicians.